Hey, uh, this morning, I'm super excited because we get to do something I'm passionate about and absolutely love to do. We get to spend the morning hearing testimonies and bragging about how amazing God is. Isn't that awesome? It's a celebration. I'm stoked, man. Um, this last week, we took about 52 people from men's ministry, women's ministry, and Koth Youth Ministry, and we headed over to the YWAM Youth with a Mission Base in Ensenada, Mexico, and we had an amazing time. We partnered with them and their mission to share the gospel to the people there in Ensenada, and it was awesome, and we built houses we uh, preached in their churches, we led kids ministries, we worked in orphanages, we did uh, door-to-door evangelism, which is a little difficult with the language barrier. Um, but in all of it, man, God was glorified, it was amazing. So it was so good. Um, while we were there, we were able to baptize five people and we saw four people come to Christ for the first time. Amen, Isn't that awesome? This morning, we are going to hear testimonies about that. In a little while, I'm going to invite some of the team up a little bit later, and you guys are going to hear from them the testimonies of God's glory. You're going to hear how they went and followed God's call on all of our lives to missions. So it's it's amazing. Um, Before I do that, though, I want to give a little challenge, and it might seem like a little rabbit trail, but I want you guys to to track with me on it, okay? Okay. These are my grandparents. There's a picture of my grandparents here. Look at that. Look at my grandpa. He's good looking, isn't he? (laughs) Um, For, ow. (laughs) For about 20 years, my grandparents uh, were in full-time missions, and they they did mostly missions in the Philippines. Um, They did local and foreign missions, but mostly they spent their time in the Philippines. They started a seminary there, and uh, they, they spent their lives just preaching the gospel. And... So growing up with grandparents who were missionaries, as you can imagine, um, I sat through a ton of mission reports, a ton of mission stories and testimonies. And I remember sitting in church and I would listen and it would be the mission report month. My grandfather would come and he would tell these incredible stories. He would preach about the gospel having the power to transform nations. And he would talk about how he, he, he prayed with somebody and watched them accept Christ and it changed everything about their life. And I would sit in church or I would sit around a dinner table in a living room or whatever where my grandpa was giving his reports. And I remember I would, I would listen and I would think, well... You know, these are entertaining stories, but that's kind of all they are, you know? Like, these stories are fun to listen to, but how is it affecting me, you know? I didn't allow God to work on my heart through these testimonies. I remember my grandmother one time when I was sitting in church and my grandpa was giving a report, my grandmother would drag me to church and I was, you know, I had that going on. And I remember my grandma scooted close and she put her arm around me and she whispered into my ear, she'd always say, oh, David. She goes, oh, David, never lose your awe for God. And I was like, ugh. (laughs) But I look back and I realize that my grandparents were trying to remind me, like, these testimonies aren't just cool stories. They're the story of God at work in the world. There's power in it. These stories and testimonies are commissioning. I want to encourage you guys this morning that this is a sacred moment. You're about to hear testimonies of God's power being unleashed, of God working through people who were obedient to his call. Soren Kaikard, who is a philosopher and maybe one of the the founding fathers of Christian existentialism, he said this. um, He noted there's two kinds of Christians, those who imitate Christ and those who are content to admire him from afar. I want to encourage you this morning, you guys, as you listen to these testimonies. Let them be more than just cool stories. Let him be more than just something that makes you pat somebody on the back and say, wow, way to go, way to go to Mexico. Let him be a commissioning. Listen to these testimonies and ask yourselves, all right, God, what would you have me do with what I've just heard? 
because testimonies aren't just stories. They're the testimony of God's power unleashed on a people group, okay? So I encourage you, listen up, open your hearts, because I'm convinced God has something to say, okay? I'm gonna pray for us, and we're gonna watch a video that recaps our time, and then the team's gonna come up, okay? Let me pray for us. Dear Lord, I pray this morning that through these testimonies, God, we would grow a hunger and a thirst to follow you, Lord. Let these testimonies be a commission to follow you into the world, to say yes, Lord, to you, to say yes, God, where do you call me? To say yes, Lord, I'm ready to follow. Let these testimonies be a commission, a challenging, a call to action for the body. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's roll video. So this is our team, and what we'd like to do here this morning is uh, we want to ask them a few questions, let them feed back to you, uh, kind of what they saw, what they felt, and what they experienced uh, down there. So there's a couple mics, I think, uh, portable mics, I think, is there, ooh, here's one here, great, I'm going to hand that to you, and you can hand it to whoever. And uh, so first impressions, uh, how many people had never, your first time, this is your first time out of the country, first time out of the U.S., nice. So maybe Brent here, uh, first impression, driving over that border, um, that day with oh, all these it, people. It is, okay, good, it's on. Um, I know it's, it's a strange thing to come um, spend your whole life in America and then uh, kind of be used to, I mean, I want to say the way we do things, but it's more the way we think, the way we interact with people, the way we 
the walk down the street, the way we drive, the way we order food, um, simple things you don't, you don't think about. Um, and you get over there and you're like, oh, this is a, this is a completely wrong way of doing this. <laughs> um, but it doesn't, didn't take very long for me to realize like, this is not a wrong way of doing things. This is just a different way of doing things. Um, and in a lot of ways, uh, a better way of doing things. Um, there's so much, um, even the people who aren't Christians, there's so much more about people there. Um, I remember my first kind of experience kind of getting off of the bus. We had to, we were walking down the street and we came to this street that was like a, um, like a four-lane street, very busy. Um, I mean, downtown busy. And we're just talking, and she doesn't even stop talking to me, doesn't stop walking, just walks off the curb, keeps walking in the street. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> and traffic just completely stops. And I look at all the cars, no one's mad, no one's frustrated, they're just like, hey, <laughs> hold, on. hold on, almost stop. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and that was probably the first time I went, oh, okay, now I get it, all right. Walked across that street with confidence every time after yeah. that. So. <laughs> uh. Somebody else, one other first time, if you, first time visitor, first time there, never, had never been there. Uh, walking across the border was scary, <clears throat> but it wasn't as bad as I expected. Like going there didn't take too long, but going back, it was just a nightmare. I want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but you survived. Yeah, like the streets were a lot different, like coming in from America and then going to Mexico. Like you walk in and it's just sand. It's not even concrete it's just all sand everywhere and like the buildings are all a little worn down and everything and it's really crazy to like um just be there and not in the wealthy country of america it's just crazy yeah. seeing the poverty there yeah dude so it, it's always funny as a youth pastor to take students on a mission trip because it's like on the way there they're like oh this is going to be so different oh you know there's no Starbucks and Dutch Brothers. And, like, <laughs> and then on the way back, they're like, we're thinking about hiding in the closet so we never have to leave, <laughs> you know? But I, I would like to hear, you know, every year, Koth Youth takes, we go on a mission trip, a summer mission trip, but this year, you know, this is something we've never done before. We have, we've had men's and women's ministry, different age groups coming together. So this was a pretty diverse crowd, you know? So I'd like to hear maybe from a couple of the adults first, what was it like working with such a diverse crowd, just different people, different age groups? Maybe, uh, can I give it to Mike right here? Sure. Yeah, I, w that's one of the things that I really like about going on these missions is here in this church, we all know each other, we see each other, but we don't really know each other. And this is an opportunity to get on your gloves and pick up a hammer and you, maybe you've never driven a nail before and you work as a team and we really have fun with that and we really get to know each other. And then the uh, sessions, I find that interesting, but the worship period after dinner and sometimes in the morning before we go is really, um, the YWAM does a really great job with that and really quite intense and I think everybody had a moving experience from that. But the fellowship of this group, uh, it was just marvelous to make friends and we'd high five each other all the time and <laughs> ha half the time you don't even remember everybody's name but you feel really connected. <laughs> So, Mike, uh, what did you? What was your career? Just I don't know if everybody knows. What was your? What did you do for a living here in the valley over the last few decades? I was a sales and marketing executive with uh, ATI Wachang in Albany, and most of the time I traveled all over the globe. And so, what was it like? Uh, you've done this is your second trip, and. Uh, what, what did you pull away from two trips building houses compared to traveling around the globe? Did you, what did God, did God drop anything in your, in your heart after? Well, um, I've been to places that are far worse than what we dealt with. India, for example, is, is by our standards a train wreck. And, uh, but the people are happy and they live, they get by. They just, it's just their life. Um, Living accommodations are comfortable, are um, adequate, but I used to stay in five-star hotels, <laughs> and, and now I'm in a, a 
what I would consider to be a one-person bedroom with bunk beds and eight guys. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out fine. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, you went down with some preconceived ideas about how it was going to be. So you built a couple houses. You had some construction going on. And then you also had some other ministry experiences. Uh, talk about God challenging your ideas of what you thought it was going to be like compared to what he showed you or what he did. Shane. Shane was one of our leaders, one of the leaders of the team. This one's kind of outside of the, the box. Um, but uh, I went down as one of the leaders and you know, my, my thought is just every time I'm just going to be like, okay, watching people and just really pushing them into action and all and just kind of, you know, leading from, from behind the scenes and, and all. And I, I know you need to lead from the front as well, but day one, show up to the church and uh, the pastor says, hey, would anyone from your team like to preach? And I was like, no, I don't think anyone's really prepared, but thank you so much for the opportunity. <laughs> <clears throat> and... Um, and uh, in, the, in the middle of uh, worship, God just starts stirring in me to, like, get up there and preach. And if you know me, I hate getting up in front of people. I don't even like sitting here. Um, and uh, he just keeps stirring, and I'm like, no. And uh, he just keeps pushing and pushing, and then I just keep getting just, this is what I want you to speak on. This is what I want you to say. This is the verses I want you to bring out. And... Um, <clears throat> I had no notes other than just the quick little things that he gave, and uh, he just asked me to like step out and just uh, and go. And uh, so I'm sure that that was like a uh, a push for the rest of the team to you know boom, let's just jump in if there's an opportunity. But like man, it it really challenged me, and it was so cool to just see God work. It wasn't me speaking up there; it was just Holy Spirit was just rolling, and it was so amazing, so mm -hmm. cool. Right next to you is Bob. Bob Cruz is, again, another one of our retirees. He was on the trip. Uh, Bob, why would you do this instead of going on vacation? Uh, I went on vacation in April. <laughs> oh, gee. But, uh, <laughs> okay. All right, next. Come on, Bob. Help me out here. Uh, Something significant, Bob. You had a great story. <laughs> I know you set me up so perfect. I know, it's like T-ball. I just But talking about preconceived ideas, we signed up for the youth uh, for the <laughs> yeah, see it's stuck in my head for the mission trip and then we found out there were youth involved and so already I was I was going, hmm, I don't know. And I told I So told his wife Ma Maureen went on the trip. She's not uh, here today, but she yeah, was on she's the She's here well. but not feeling too good and didn't want to deal with the pressure and the lights, but uh, so I said, Maureen, I don't know, man. There's going to be youth there. And, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, the next thing was uh, we're going to put you in a room with seven other guys. And I went to Maureen. And I said, I don't know, Maureen. <laughs> you know, you're going to be with seven other gals. And uh, I... We had some, some financial things came up, and I went to Maureen, and I said, I don't know, Maureen. <laughs> you know, we might be able to use the money in, a, you know, in another way. And Maureen, throughout the whole time, she said, no, oh, let's, let's just keep praying and praying and praying. And so finally came to that final deposit, and I was pretty convinced I convinced her. <laughs> and so I said, you know, you, you do what, what you believe God wants you to do. And I walked away and I told Bruce last night, I went, I got this one. <laughs> and so the next day I said, so did you put in the, de the final deposit? She goes, yeah. And I went, oh, okay. <laughs> so I didn't start off on the right foot. And, but once I got there, I'm a uh, observer. I love to, to watch people. And I really observed what God was doing in the midst of the youth and the transformation that was taking place in people's lives. And I, I was blessed just to be a part of the group. But I just want to share one real quick thing in regards to uh, what I got out of it. You know, in John 15, 15, it said uh, Jesus is speaking and he gives us a definition of a friend. And he says... I know, talking to his disciples, he says, I no longer call you servants, for a servant does not know 
the master's business. But I call you friends, for I have spoken to you everything that the Father has spoken to me. And I really went to Mexico and made some friends. And you know, people, you have a lot of, uh, of acquaintances, but we don't have a lot of friends. Those that take the time to speak the heart of the Father into our lives. And so my, my best time was, was being part of developing friendships, one on one, two, threes, or fours, where we'd get together and speak the heart of the Father through scripture and encouragement. That for me was, was the best part. You know, uh, just coming back, having something that I can continue to develop. You know, Mexico is done with, but the friends that I made there prayerfully will last forever. Mm. So you guys went there going to minister to people, building these two houses, and you turned the keys over. I imagine that was a pretty significant uh, day. But sometimes God sort of surprises us, and we're the ones who end up getting ministered to. Anybody want to talk about that, maybe? On the, oh, Noah, right here? Yeah, Noah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Hey, guys, I'm Noah. Um, so, like, uh, the house build was awesome. I mean... I mean, I, I came there just saying, oh, I'm just going to bless this family and minister to them, you know. Um, but after we handed over the keys and um, saying our goodbyes, I was just like, wait, I didn't bless them. They blessed me because the mom uh, of the family made us corn and tamales. Oh, they were so good. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, dude. <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> um, and um, it was like, it was just really powerful, just like seeing the family so joyful. And here in America, we have everything. I, I mean, my family has a house. We have like a cool backyard and everything, but they literally had nothing. They lived in a shack and we go give them a house and they're just like crying and um, hugging us and like saying how thankful they were. And it was just really cool. So, mm. yeah. Somebody else in the, in the back row here? Uh, right way over here on the, on the far right. This is... Uh, Noah's dad, or Dr. J? Dr. J! <laughs> uh, first of all, church, I just want to thank you because you were right there with us because you made a lot of sacrifices as well, financially, uh, time to invest in us, and also those of us, those of you loved ones that sent us made an incredible sacrifice because as we were going, having these very great experiences, you were at home dealing with the day-to-day -day life things and supporting us, so I wanted to we all thank you very much for that, and we want to give you a hand for what role you played right there with us. Uh, what God did for me as I was standing at the very end of our house build, we gave the keys to the family, and we shared, and I thought this trip was for my son. I thought he needed to go, and I was just there to support him, but God began to work in my heart, realizing that I needed to be right there with him, and one of the themes was uh, living stones that we were all living stones and we we're all uh, part of this great building and we were building a house, but we're part of this great building, we're part of this great church. And God started to stir in my heart that we are a great family and working in my heart to be part of that family of Christ to minister, to listen to stories, to tell my story. And we all have great stories to tell. And that's something that I took back to be able to tell my story and encourage you to tell your story as well. Hey, Julia. So you're, you grew up in you know Christian family, your parents are missionaries, a YOM kid. Like this is this is nothing new to you, right? So, what was was there something God did in your life while you were there that just surprised you? Like, wait, I thought I thought I knew what was going on, and He just did this whole other thing. Um. So, well, I came in and I was like, oh, I've lived in Africa. This is gonna be nothing, you know? Because like in Africa. It was like hard and I get there and I'm like, okay, you know, everyone's gonna like have an encounter, like, you know, coming from a Christian family, you think you already know God. And as I get there, I start thinking like, I don't really know him as much as I should. And when we had this little thing that we had to write in behind our backs and everyone came writing and this girl wrote daughter of the king and I looked at it and I was like, am I daughter of the king? And that night I was praying and I had a vision that God was sitting next to me and he looked at me and he was like, he was telling me how much he loves me. And I've always struggled with trying to understand God's love for me just 
because I always look at my dad, and my dad tells me Jesus loves me more than he loves me. And it was just hard to understand, how could someone love me more than my earth father? And Jesus just looked at me, and when I looked at my dad in the vision, I felt like a lot of love, but when I looked at God, I felt a love so much bigger. And that was just so good to understand from him that I am his daughter, and he loves me so much. So that was just that. We were so blessed to have the spiritual emphasis as well as the serving and the building and going out into the neighborhoods and the outreach. But God met so many of us. I know all of us, really, because um, there were those deep times through the worship and through prayer, and we had an evening where we could go to these different stations and just reflect on what God was doing in our lives and what we can do to love him more. Um, it's just an amazing way that these, that these YWAM, this staff, put together this incredible ministry opportunities for anyone who wants to come. And I just was so overwhelmed by their hospitality, their goodness, their support, their care. Uh, I mean, Bruce and I, we spent many years in Youth with a Mission, but every time I'm with the Youth with a Mission staff again, or these outreach opportunities, I'm just so thankful that God is getting the glory for everything that we do and everything that we become. And uh, yeah, it was just super, super wonderful. I can't even put into words how impressed and how impacted I was by God's grace and his goodness over us. Well, Rachel or, uh, Rachel or Bethany, who are the leaders? Rachel or Bethany, uh, your impression, God at work, God sighting, hearing God in the midst of a week of busyness. Um, the trip was incredible. We had um, a lot of apprehension or anxiety about what it would be like to mix so many different groups of people and having um, the men and the women with us, you know, kind of have this routine of how we've done youth mission trips before, but to be able to s sort of step back and watch um, men of God pray over our teens um, added this level of, of intensity and maturity and spiritual. It just kind of raised it all up. And I mean, the um, Mission Adventure is the like program that um, YWAM designs. And truthfully, it's, it's really designed for like high school students. And so to have this group of older men and women um, to just be able to jump right in and um, they didn't just like put up with the skits and the like strobe lights and the like yelling when you came in. I mean, they just, they dove in and they embraced it and they spoke such spiritual um, strength into us as leaders. And um, David and I had talked about usually when we're on a, a mission trip, when we've done it in the past, we're kind of the like front line spiritually. And to have these men and women come and pray over us. Um, you know, yesterday was our first day back and usually we're just like completely spiritually sapped. And both David and I came back and felt refreshed. Um, and that came from these men and women jumping in and saying, you're a part of our family and, um, and speaking life. And, and to hear our teens say like, wow, they have so much more wisdom than us. And we're like, yeah, they do. Um, and, and thinking through what an incredible thing that says about our church community and knowing that, um, you know, just like Jay was saying, you you guys are the ones who sent us, and we felt so blessed in representing you guys, um, but also knowing that now that we're back, um, and obviously we're not gonna get a chance to hear everybody's story, so I really encourage you, these, part of the reason that we have everybody up here is because we want you to see who these people are and seek them out and hear more of these stories. Mm. They, we want to pray with you guys. We want to share this because you really did send us, and we want to be able to share with you guys even more. This is like 
barely tip of the iceberg kind of things yeah. that you're hearing. So we want to share that with you guys. Daniele. Hey, so God did some cool stuff in your life, didn't he, when you were there? Can you talk about that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, um, before we go to this trip, I got time, spent time praying with Linda. We really prayed for God put us one, because if, you, if we are really one with him, we could do powerful things. And we saw, and it happened, we were one. And we did amazing things there. God did through us amazing things. And we were really, really blessed. And one of my prayers before I go is, I've been in missions for over 20 years. And I was feeling, I, I ju we just came from Africa. It's, I was kind of overwhelming and feeling a little bit burnout. Not a little bit, but I was burnout. And I say, God, set fire in my heart. I want to feel this passion. I want to be passionate again for missions and for others. And while I was in Mexico, Mexico, <laughs> it was just amazing. And today I wake up and I, I want everyone from this team to be in my house. Yeah. I want to <laughs> serve breakfast. I want to love you guys. I want to live with you. I, yeah. I just felt I belong. <laughs> I was longing for that, to feeling I belong. One of the days uh, during the worship time, I, was, I had all my plans before God, what I'm going to do next. And suddenly God said, forget all about that. I'm going to tell you what I have for you in missions. And while I was starting to hear all of this from God, I just felt so much freedom. I start to scream and I say, oh my goodness, I will, they will kick off me from the church on the hill. <laughs> I felt so much freedom and I start to jump and scream loudly this freedom and started to dancing before God. And yeah, it, I will never forget this experience with God. And I really want to honor you guys. You all are amazing. I want to honor Linda. You are such a wonderful woman and humble and I, I learn a lot from you and from each one of you guys. So we have several educators that are on this team, uh, Kelly and Mindy uh, and, and Beth. It, what, what a, it, from your point of view, you gave those keys to that, those, those families, you furnished the houses, we built the houses, but, but what did you feel like God was saying uh, while you were down there or what did you see God say? Lindsay, I'd like you, can you chime in on that? Oh, sorry, I missed you there. I didn't, sorry, Lindsay. Yeah, educator. Tell us your name. Where do you teach? I, my name's Lindsay, and I teach at State and Middle School. Teach nice. sixth grade. Okay. And sorry, can you clarify your question? Uh, kind of, you, you guys gave the keys to these ladies. They gave the keys to these families. What's going on inside your head? Because you work with kids all the yeah. time. There's kids everywhere down there. The people getting the house, those kids are going to benefit. What, what are you thinking? What, what do you feel like God was, what was God saying to you during that time? Well, as we handed the keys over to the family, I didn't expect to have the honor and privilege to be able to be like the person that handed over the keys in our building group to the family. And um, listening to people speak, like we each had an opportunity standing in a circle, if you saw in the video, um, to one at a time, we passed the keys around the circle person by person and um, speak like just something to the family or pray for them. And... Um, and I know from, like, I mean, I'm only a, oh, this will be my third year of teaching, but the importance of, uh, for a child to feel safe and loved in order to be successful in the classroom and to be able to, like, drop that filter of needing to be in protective mode, like, feel um, that when they feel secure and that they have a place to go home to, they're able to more engage in their learning and then be more successful for in that area of their lives. And, um, and so something that as like one of the pieces in that video, the little boy, Hector, not Hector, Hector, um, Hector, Hector um, he like, you probably saw like he had these school supplies spread out all over his bed. And as like, I watched that video at home yesterday, as I was reflecting on the trip, I was like, wow, I get excited about how many pockets are in my backpack as I do my school supply shopping and he's probably like, I don't, he just was like looking and oogling over like each piece. And um, I, I was very 
one like nose to the grindstone working and slaving over what's that saw that we used like whatever I was all excited about using a saw and but like the teenager the skill saw yeah feel really cool and the teenagers spent so much time loving on the kids and um and I love working with kids and so I was kind of like oh I didn't get to spend time with them and play with them but like I know that those kids felt super loved and they were just like in full tears as we were yeah. as we were leaving and it was you know like I'm really like glad that the, that the kids got the opportunity to like pour love on them and be blessed by that and knowing that the kids themselves at the in that home were just fully blessed too in a way that they won't forget. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's funny Lindsay um she was uh Whenever we go to go some, somewhere, I have to brag on her a little bit. We were always like, all right, we all together, it's time to go. And we'd say, where's Lindsay? And we'd see her over ministering to young people. We'd see her ministering to somebody we walked past. And it's like, and it's that thing. I was like, as, a, you know, as the leader, I'm like, we got to get on the van. But, but it's like, Lindsay's like, no, 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 I'm going to stop. Even at the border. <laughs> like, she just, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour out everything I can while I'm here. I'm not going to leave anything behind, I'm gonna, or I'm not going to leave anything for the, the plane ride home. I'm going to pour everything out God's put in my heart. And it's pretty amazing to watch. So the cost everybody had to raise around uh, somewhere around $900 or something like that. Yeah, and then we also raised another 16000 plus for the houses. Someone next year is contemplating going. Why would you, what would you say to them? Oh, you can go to Disneyland or go on a missions trip. What, what would you say to them? There's a... Tell us who you are and what you do. <laughs> There's a lot of different things. No, wait a oh, sorry. <laughs> she I'm just sorry. wants to share. Tell us who you are and what do you do for a living? I'm Mindy, and I teach at Cross Hill. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so raising the support and... There's just a lot of different pieces to going on a trip like this. Um, it was kind of weird. I went to the the trip that the church or that Cross Hill went on in March, and that was easy because I already had the week off. You know, it was great. Uh, and in in January, um, I had actually gotten called to jury duty, and so it was during. I had to delay it to the month of July. And I, I knew that this trip, and this, that was the one thing in the back of my mind, like raising the money, yeah, that's a big thing, but also jury duty, something that's completely out of my control. And um, I got the letter, and I was called to jury duty smack dab in the middle of our Mexico trip. And since I had already delayed once, I'm like, well, I guess I'll be arrested. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And so I had actually called Bethany and I was like, well, here's what's going on. And we prayed about it. And I called the, um, the, com- the jury duty and they were like, yeah, you're going on a mission trip? You're a Christian? Absolutely, I'll delay that. And uh, so, <laughs> so it's August 10th. I don't know. I don't even know what that is. They told me not to look it up. But anyway, <laughs> um, but just raising the support, Brett and I were terrified of raising the support um, because we're two people. And um, there, the support that came in was so crazy. Uh, we, you know, like second cousins from Nebraska sending $300 that we haven't <laughs> talked to in years. Um, and, you know, we, we prayed over those letters and um, we, when we wrote them, we wrote this line and it sounded so cheesy. We wanted to delete it so badly, um, but it was, you are going to be a part of our team. We're asking for you to partner with us and we will go physically, but you guys are a part of our team. And when we passed around the keys, I had this vision of everybody who gave standing behind each one of us. It would have reached the entire neighborhood just the hundreds of people that paid and gave of themselves above and beyond what they are capable of. And I was able to tell the family that and said, you know, you're overwhelmed by the 20 people who are here right now. You don't even know how many people love you because they gave the money because they love you and they believe in you, not because of they love us and believe in us. And it was just so fun to see that come full circle. That's awesome. Hey, Kelly, you were part of some door-to-door evangelism while you were there. I bet that was super easy, huh? It 
was the easiest thing I've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> Hands so down. So what, what was something that, I mean, even doing that ministering, pouring out, um, maybe somebody's going, oh, they did door-to-door evangelism. Like, I don't, I wouldn't even know where to start. Was, I mean, you are professional and door-to-door already, right? You're ready to go. You've been. Kelly, what do you years. do for a living? Um, what is your book? I teach fourth grade out in Silverton at Victor okay. Point. Put me in front of a room of kids and I'm a clown. I can say and do anything and it's no problem. Um, ask me to knock on someone's door and share the word of Jesus and I am be- I'm petrified. Um, Shane was a great arm twister. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. I'm like, no, I can't, no, I can't. <laughs> so uh, I stood behind, but um, what I saw was amazing. And um, I promised him I would go and listen um, and, and just watch. And um, just, I think for me, um, you know, God pushed me into that place so that I would be better able to find the words when the time came for me to share. Um, And I watched um, just this non-threatening, welcoming, encouraging way that Shane has about him um, and uh, pushing gently when they wanted, uh, one woman that we saw said, oh, no, you know, we're Christians, you know, bye. (laughs) That was kind of what she wanted to do. And he's like, oh, no, no, oh, no, no. Um, Can you tell us what it means to be a Christian? And her face kind of goes, you know, blank. And um, that's his way in the door. Um, and so just that gentle pushing um, and, and the words that he gave. I, you know, I'm not ready to knock on a door. I, in, in our country, you know, that's intrusive, right? It's someone knocks on your door and you go, oh, please don't let it be the Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> I can't, right? Um, no offense meant, but we all do that. And I know you do too. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> So, um, you know, it took me completely out of my comfort zone, but I feel like it planted this seed in me that I can have conversation. And on a personal note for me, I have, um, I have a daughter, Emily, um, that you can all be praying for. Um, she believes in science, not Jesus. And uh, she is asking questions about Jesus so she can argue the point with me at this point in her life. Um, But over the trip, just kind of listening to Shane and watching the door-to-door stuff, um, I felt like I was better prepared to approach those questions that she might have for me. And um, I will tell you, actually, while we were on the trip, um, I got a text from my daughter, and she said, Mom, I'm really struggling, but I've been praying about it, and I've been watching podcasts. of church services, and I feel like I'm getting some strength and some encouragement there, and maybe I'd like to come to church with you one day soon. And she she said she would be here today, and she changed her mind, but that's okay, because on Wednesday, we're doing a forced family vacation, and I'm ready. I got it. I got this. God's got this. Okay. Hey, so we're going to have the worship team come, yeah. and we thank you guys so much. Um, thank you, team, for, for going with us, and thank you guys so much for blessing yeah. us. Um, so thank you, guys. We're going to give them a hand, and we're going to invite them off the stage here. No, you're good. If, if you, you can leave it. Uh, we're going to close, but if, if, um, if you were to look on our website... Uh, if you have never been on our Koth website, you'll see on a tab on the left-hand side what we call our values. It's what moves us. It's, it's, uh, it's why we do what we do. What we do is one thing, but why we do what we do is another. And if you look at those values, you'll see number one is we value devotion to Christ and decisions that reflect that devotion. So the decision to spend $1,000 to build a home for the poor as opposed to go to Disneyland. There's nothing wrong with Disneyland, but that reflects something operating inside of someone that's bigger than just what you can see with the eye. Another one of our values says we value a missional lifestyle. That is that God's passionate about reaching out to the hurting. You may think, well, darn it. We spent all that money and they just went down there and built two houses. And there's probably need 
two million houses in the world. It's true. But Jesus said this, when the Son of Man comes in glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne and he will judge the nations and he will separate the sheep from the goats and he will say to those on his right, the sheep, come you blessed of my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom that was prepared for you before the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When were you a stranger and we invited you in? Or when did we see you needing clothes and we gave? Lord, when were you sick or in prison? Or and Jesus said, truly I tell you, whatever you've done for one of these, the least of my brothers and sisters, you did it for me. That's the gospel in a nutshell. As we finish, we're going to take communion and uh, as is our custom, because what those crackers in those little cups of juice represent is something far bigger, just like what you heard here today. That cup and that bread represent brokenness and, and redemption. So as we go, we're going to finish with that. And uh, as you approach those tables, just grab together. We'll come back and we'll just take and, and we'll be done.
as this cracker and this juice represent something far bigger, something far more eternal, the broken body and the redeeming blood of Jesus. We pray that our lives would represent something far bigger than owning homes and cars and lands, IRAs, retirement accounts. We pray that our lives would represent and live and be something bigger. Let your kingdom come wherever you send us on the earth. India, Mexico, downtown Salem, wherever you've placed us, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven through your people. And everybody said, amen, and we take together.